Hi, my name is Kristen Buck, and I am a chemical oceanographer here at BIOS, and I study the chemistry and biological importance of trace metals on phytoplankton in the ocean. The elements I'm most interested in are iron, which acts as an important micronutrient, and copper, which can often be a toxin, um, especially in areas of human activity. So my work here at BIOS is looking specifically at the chemistry of these elements, iron and copper, in seawater in the Sargasso Sea, and looking at how much of these elements is actually available to the phytoplankton and the role that these metals play in the productivity of, and success of these phytoplankton communities. So one of the advantages of working out at BIOS is the access to the open ocean, and we do that on the research vessel, the Atlantic Explorer. The AE is a huge benefit for the work that I do. It's very rare to have the ability to get on a ship right in front of my institution and head out to the open ocean all within the span of one day. For this project, we're going to investigate the effects of trace metals on phytoplankton. So we're going to look at this using natural seawater with natural phytoplankton assemblages in it. It's actually fairly simple in the sense that we'll go out and we'll get some water um, courtesy of the Atlantic Explorer. Using that water, we will add nutrients, macronutrients to it like nitrogen and phosphorus, or you could think of as miracle Grow, And then we'll add a bunch of uh, metals that can be toxic like copper and zinc. We will also try adding um, a special molecule that actually binds these metals and makes them not bioavailable, which means that we can add this to a system and it essentially strips out the usefulness of any metals in there. This molecule is called EDTA and it's found in all kinds of household items like laundry detergents and shampoos. The phytoplankton that we exposed to macronutrients grew very well. The ones that we exposed to toxic levels of copper didn't grow at all, as expected. The ones that we exposed to both macronutrients and EDTA, those ones didn't grow very well at all because in that case, while they had lots of macronutrients, the EDTA prevented them from using the micronutrients, the iron, that they needed out of the water. So the results that we see from the experiments that we've done as part of this project really represent some natural conditions in the oceans. And something like 30 to 40% of the surface area of the global ocean doesn't have enough iron for things to grow optimally. On the other hand, there are a lot of areas in the ocean, especially estuaries, coastal systems, where a lot of people are, so urban environments, where metals become toxic very easily. We commonly refer to the importance of trace metals in the oceans as the Goldilocks effect. If you don't have enough of the trace element that you, that you need, say iron, then you can't grow. If you have too much of it, it can be toxic in the case of copper. You have to get those concentrations just right, otherwise the phytoplankton won't be able to grow well. As a whole, the study of trace metals has come very much to the forefront of oceanographic research. We are just starting our first global ocean survey of trace elements and their isotopes, and the acronym for that is GEOTRACES. Um, and this is a global ocean program. It involves something like 30 countries around the world. Using um, large research vessels like the Atlantic Explorer, we will do transects across every ocean basin from surface to bottom, providing the first measurements of a lot of these trace elements, including iron, copper, and zinc.